Hello, and welcome to the Bath Studio School. My name is Ryan Berum. And I'm Ben Atkinson. We are pleased to welcome the local labor counselor, Joe Raymond. Joe, how are you today? Yeah, I'm good. Good. How long have you been a politician for? Uh, I was first elected uh, onto Bath and North East Somerset Council in 2015. So, three and a half years now. All right, so quite a while. Have you always supported labor? Uh, yeah. I, I've, um, well, I, you know, I, I kind of... When I was growing up and uh, as a student, you know, flirted with different political ideas uh, in terms of active party membership, you know, Labour's the only party I've ever campaigned for and wanted, yeah, in, a, in an election. So, as a councillor, what steps do you take to strive for justice and equality? So, uh, as a councillor, I've got a platform that I think a lot of people don't have, um, even though Labour in a minority on Bath and North East Somerset Council. We've got six out of 65 councillors. Uh, I've got a platform from which I'm able to, to fight for things. So things like the, my campaigning around uh, pay inequality at the University of Bath, uh, recently about uh, school admissions policies, uh, and got a win on that. Um, other things like uh, uh, exempting care leavers from council tax up until the age of 25, you know, I put that forward as an idea and, and it was supported cross party uh, and things, you know, uh, a whole range of things, including things like uh, managing to stop uh, any badger culling from taking place on Bath and North East Somerset controlled land. So. Absolutely. As a young politician, do you feel confident in your abilities to the older politicians? Yeah, I think I bring a, a different kind of perspective uh, to politics uh, than older people uh, on the council do. I'm one of very few councillors who, who probably rents their rents their home out of necessity. Um, there are probably more, I imagine, more more people who are landlords on the council than people who, who rent. Um, you know, oh, I'm someone who paid tuition fees uh, at university, not the nine thousand pounds now, but but still I paid tuition fees. Uh, unlike the majority of the councillors, uh, there's a whole host of things that you know people talk about life experience. Uh, being, uh, being useful for someone in politics and, and as if that, that means that an older person is better. Actually, younger people today have life experiences that older people will never have had. Do you agree with Keir Stammer's comments you made <coughs> yesterday about the UK's Brexit plan, even if it does contradict the comments you made earlier? Uh, the comments that, that I made? Well, not uh, you, but the Labour Party in general. Um, no, I don't think it does. Um, I, I think that our policy um, has been fairly consistent. Um, and, you know, I understand that people don't understand Labour's policy on Brexit, but that's because it's a nuanced, thought-through policy for one of the biggest political decisions and economic decisions that we're going to make in this country for generations. You know, I think if people understand, or claim to understand, the Tory policy on Brexit or the Lib Dem policy on Brexit because they've got policies that can be summed up in three words. Now, I don't think that a good policy on one of the biggest political and economic decisions for generations should be able to be summed up in three words uh, of like Brexit means Brexit or exit from Brexit. You know, uh, I don't think that's a good policy. We've got our six tests um, for Brexit. So uh, around things like uh, around trade and, and having a customs union, workers protection, environmental protections, uh, things that we want to see uh, from a Brexit deal. And if uh, if the deal that comes back does not meet those six tests, and, and now it looks highly likely that it won't, then Labour MPs will vote against that deal. Uh, if that deal falls in Parliament, then I think that there must then be a general election. I, I, I can't see how uh, Theresa May and her government could continue after, after a defeat of that magnitude. <coughs> um, and, then, and then Labour would need to decide what to do then. You know, could we then negotiate a deal that meets our six tests? Uh, if not, if that is not possible, uh, then I think you know, it would be foolish to then drive us over a cliff edge as a country uh, and to, to give the country a deal that is bad for its economic uh, and social interests. Uh, it would also be bad to then just say, well, we must um, uh, just overturn the result of the referendum because it was one of the largest democratic exercises this country has ever seen. So I think... What, what that means is then, at that point, then there would be a necessity for uh, a second referendum uh, on whatever deal we could strike or, or remaining in the European Union. Um, 
And I think I think you have to go through those stages first, which I which is I think what Keir Starmer laid out yesterday, and I think has been our policy all along. We're not ruling anything out. Um, we're not ruling anything in at the same time because. You know, we don't know what's going to happen. Uh, and now I know that that was a really long answer, but I think that's what you need mm. on the question yeah. about something of this magnitude. Absolutely. Going back to the Brexit discussion, <coughs> how do you feel about the Brexit plan coming from Sir Keirs instead of Corbyn? Uh, well, I don't think they're any different. I think, you know, uh, so Keir Starmer apparently you know, seemed to make waves by saying um, that Remain would be an option in a, in a referendum, but that's always been the policy. Nothing has been taken off the table. Uh, and we've always said that as a party. I see. So what do you think will happen if the Conservatives do push through with their Brexit deal? I think it would be terrible for, for our country. Um, it, well, the, the deal that uh, Theresa May came up with, the Chequers deal, um, is dead. And, and so I don't know what the, the next plan is, because the EU will not agree to that deal. So. Um, I've no idea where they're going to go now. Will they um, you know, put a hard border on the island of Ireland uh, and potentially inflame conflict that was going on for decades and, and has only in recent history ended? Uh, uh, I, I don't doubt that they would risk uh, peace in Northern Ireland uh, be, um, for their own political interests. I don't doubt that at all. Um, I hope that they won't, though. Uh, but, but that's not something that I'd be willing to risk. Yeah. So here in Bath, every day we have 30 people sleeping rough. <coughs> we only have three soup kitchens open. How do you think we can confront this issue? Uh, so I don't think you know, soup kitchens and uh, night shelters and, and, and this direct access support is really important. Um, but we have to tackle the, the root cause of homelessness, um, which is uh, just... I think agreeing that everyone has the right to a safe and secure home uh, and that uh, when someone is homeless, either rough sleeping or sofa surfing, then, then as a society we've, we've failed because no one should ever be without a home. So I think that, that requires us to firstly build a lot more homes, um, to, to do things like um, introduce uh, or end no fault evictions. Uh, so your landlord can't just sell up and, and give you a month's notice and say you've got to be out because uh, for, for most people that, that would be a catastrophe uh, and in, in case of one of the major causes of homelessness is, is relationship breakdown um, and, and so we need to have houses for people to go into when their relationship breaks down uh, and we need, to, we need to have those to be truly affordable so that means building a lot more social homes uh, that can be afforded if you're on, uh, if you're claiming housing benefit uh, or, or in very low-paid work, uh, and we need to introduce rent controls uh, as well, so that landlords can't just jack up the rent uh, overnight and, and expect you to pay that. They should only be allowed to increase the rent by a certain amount each year, uh, a fairly small amount. So, with the um, police presence in Bath, do you feel that <coughs> is we have enough, or with the lack of a police station after all of being moved outside of Bath, do you feel that? We should have a police station now in Bath, or are we doing okay without one? Oh, well, I've, already, I've previously said um, that it's ridiculous that we don't have a proper police station in Bath. Um, we are a, we're a city. We're a proper city. Um, we have huge numbers of tourists. Uh, we're a, a living area that, that has crime. And we need a proper police station. It's not good enough for... Um, for you know, us to not have a custody suite in Bath and for people going into custody to be you know, sent over to Canesham and then, and then left there uh, when they're released, just left to go and find their own way, own way home. That, that's not good enough. Um, and it's not good enough that someone can't just walk in um, uh, and speak to, a, speak to a police officer uh, or a member of police staff. Uh, Labour have announced uh, 10,000 new police officers um, across the country uh, because... You know, they're vitally important for communities and uh, for um, and, and particularly for, for things like organised crime and terrorism because when well, you've got community police officers who know what's going on in their area, um, they can pick up on things that are, uh, well, that's a bit odd, that's a bit off, uh, and then follow up on those. Uh, and that's that's how you know, 
a lot of organised crime is found out, a lot of terrorist plots are foiled through community policing. Uh, and, and we've lost that in, in a big way in this country um, uh, and in this city. Uh, and so we need, to, we need to have more police officers out on the beat. All right. Going back to a more national thing about university fees, do you feel that oftentimes lower standard universities have fees that are too high or... Do you think that we are at a place where our fees are at a good place? Um, it's not just it's not lower standard universities. I, I hate the idea of league tables for universities and and this kind of marketisation of, of higher education. It, it doesn't work in in students' interests or in society's interests. Um, so I'd say all universities have fees that are too high uh, because they've got fees. Uh, and I don't I don't believe in tuition fees. I don't believe in education as a commodity to be bought and sold. Um, I think it's completely arbitrary that universities are, are paid for. You know, schools are not uh, well, public, uh, you know, state-funded schools are not um, paid for. Uh, and, and higher education is a is a social good. Uh, when someone goes to to university, they're not just benefiting themselves, benefiting society as a whole, and, they're, uh, and crucially, they're benefiting their future employer because their future employer, that company, will benefit from the higher education that that student's got and so they will profit from it and now it's it's the people that profit from it that I want to see paying for higher education so that's through corporation tax uh, uh, and through through general taxation and people say the argument is oh well why should a low paid person who didn't go to university pay for like, a middle class you know, young person to go to university but they wouldn't be it's a complete fallacy. Uh, Labour's fully costed plan uh, for for the economy uh, introduced like had a, had a plan for for free higher education uh, and not a penny more tax for anyone only under I think about eighty thousand pounds a year. So it's a complete lie. The idea that uh, that working class people would have to pay for middle class people to go to university uh, and it's just used as an argument by people who who think that. You know, education should be bought and sold, which which I think is an is an ideological concept that, that I completely and fundamentally disagree with. Absolutely. So Jeremy Corbyn stated that he plans to create four hundred thousand green jobs with closed borders. Do you feel that this is possible? Mm. Was that today? I'm not sure if it was. I think it was. I think yeah. it was in his speech today. Now, bear in mind, I've come straight from work, so I've not I've not watched his speech yet. Something to watch and catch up. Um, when when you say with closed borders, do you know? so like after a Brexit and per se, so it's going to be harder for people obviously to be getting into the country. And oh, okay. Those green jobs, where people. Okay. Jobs well, so on on the issue of of um, the green jobs, I think, um, I think this kind of hot it it kind of goes back to um, to to the nineteen eighties when when Thatcher was closing the the coal mines and and when when we lost a lot of industry uh, in this country in working class areas in the north and midlands and, and uh, Scotland and, and in some ways in the south and in Wales. Um, the, uh, those areas lost jobs that, that people had for life. They, uh, they, they lost that, that kind of community uh, of people going to, to, their, to their jobs down the pit uh, and, uh, uh, and that was bad. However, you know, I don't want to reopen coal mines because uh, I'm an environmentalist, and uh, and we need to we need to be focusing on on getting energy from renewable sources. So you you know taking those green jobs and putting them in the communities that were devastated by the closure of the coal mines is what should have happened a long time ago. You know closing coal mines is not a bad idea because they're terrible for the environment. But you have to replace the jobs. Uh, and, and what has actually happened since the 80s is that rather than digging up coal here, we've actually just shipped it in from abroad. And so it wasn't an environmental thing back then, but it should have been. Uh, and they should have been replaced with green jobs. But as it was, it was just an attack on, on, on those workers. Uh, and so I, I absolutely support that idea because you look, at, you look at the kind of industries in those areas now uh, and you've got things like massive Amazon warehouses that you know, employ people through agencies on zero hours, uh, insecure contracts on minimum wage. Uh, people have no security. They, they can't afford to live. You've got people sleeping in tents because they don't 
earn enough from their from their job at Amazon to to live in a house or a flat. You know, that's absolutely disgraceful. And so you know, let's drive out companies like that, replace those jobs with with green jobs uh, in those areas. I think is a brilliant idea. So a lot of people comment that Labour is a London-centred youth obsessed and not doing enough to engage the people in North and Scotland. How would you feel about these comments and what would you respond to say to people who are saying these comments? And I think I don't, I don't agree with that at all. Uh, you know, the, the policies uh, from the Labour Party are, are about you know, regenerating those communities that were, that were destroyed by neoliberalism, uh, just as we've just been talking about. It's about improving services that, that are under pressure. It's about having a good education and, and health care. It's about proper rights at work and, and good pay. You know, these speak to, to working people up and down the country. It doesn't matter where you're from. It doesn't matter if you enjoy avocado on toast and craft beer or not. You know, these are not, they're not metropolitan policies. They're, they're policies for working people. So that we, and you know, and eventually to bring about an, an irreversible shift in, in wealth and power from you know, the few to the many. Uh, and that's what we're all about. Absolutely. Um, should we do the quick fire questions? Sure, all right. Just Absolutely. to finish off, we have a bunch of quick fire questions. Just simple things, you know, to kind of let the people yep. get to know you as a person. Okay. So one of the things that we have is, like, would you consider yourself more of a cat or a dog person? Uh, cat. Cat person. Oh, do you have a cat? Uh, yeah, I do. Yeah. Huh. What's your cat's name? Uh, Mulligan. Okay. Would you consider yourself, um, do you have support any sports teams or something like that? Uh, only Bath City. Bath City. Yeah. Did you ever play football as a kid? No. 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 What kind of things did you enjoy as a kid? Oh, um, did a lot of walking and I, I, was, I was a scout. All right. Did a lot of, yeah. did a lot of that. Very yeah. good. Thank you, thank you, Joe, for your time. Um, this is the end. It's been a pleasure to have you. No problem. Thank you.